Welcome to Standing Firm Tribulation Radio, broadcasting the truth in the last days, giving commentary to the latest news, encouraging the faithful remnant through God's Word to help you stand firm. This is a worldwide ministry to all of God's children, of which many are currently undergoing intense persecution while others are facing an onslaught of demonic activity, extreme weather, and catastrophic disasters. You're listening to Tribulation Radio. Welcome to Tribulation Radio. The name of our show today is called The Blind Masses Reject God's Providence. Any resurgence of Hillary Clinton's democratic progressivism will only continue to lead to the blind masses and its demonstrators to reject God's providence and embrace total dependence on the state. My prayer is that the love of God's providential care for His children will open the eyes of the blind masses, especially those marching in the streets of America. I encourage you to share this important message with everyone so that the tide does not turn back to progressivism and all manner of wickedness. Just how involved is God in the affairs of men? The Diaz to in large numbers settled the new world believed that God set everything in motion and then retired back to heaven, allowing man to write his own destiny. Man was in charge of his own future and free to operate without the involvement of God. In a very short time, God was taken completely out of the equation by instituting the separation of church and state, allowing the state to chart her own path unencumbered by the church's authority and at liberty to make laws contrary to his divine principles. Although God in the beginning was acknowledged by giving an overt appearance that he was still in charge, there was a strong current of progressivism leading the masses away from trusting in God exclusively. In time, this movement championed by the progressives would influence every system developed by modern man from German socialism in the late 1800s to Russian communism at the beginning of the next century. In every case, up to the modern age, it's been billed as a victory for the people over its tyrannical leaders. The only thing that has held this country from these extremes is the wealthy capitalists fighting with their last breath to hold on to power and the support it's received from the Christian community. After many years of leading the masses to trust in their own government for schooling, health care, welfare, and other social services, I am afraid that the days are numbered as we slip into socialism, forcing capitalism to adhere to the new doctrine. All of our support and fighting will not change the inevitable, but we can stand firm and not be swept away by the tide of deception. Unfortunately, many will join the ranks of the masses, believing they have finally won a victory for the people. Many will march and chant freedom at last, completely unaware that they have blindly placed themselves in bondage to the state and to the rulers of this age. Why have they become so blind? Simply put, because they have gone for so many years depending on the state rather than God alone, while the church remains silent. They refuse to see the cycle of dependence passed on from one generation to another. They refuse to see that their dependence on the mental health professionals and psychotropic drugs is bondage to a system that can never bring real healing to their emotional and psychological problems. They refuse to see that with the new health care measure of the Affordable Care Act, Obamacare, It will force doctors to reject patients who have Medicare because of the additional measures required. They refuse to see that their level of service will drastically reduce once a person reaches age 76. Unable to get the same care given to younger patients, annual physicals for the elderly would be reduced to a questionnaire mainly consisting of psychological questions such as, are you depressed? What in the beginning appeared to be victory for the people will in the end be its enslavement. In retrospect, this was a fundamental shift in doctrine from the old world that believed that God orchestrated the affairs of men through His divine providence. By working hard and trusting in God alone to provide in the midst of life's problems, it strengthens one's faith in the Almighty. 
He was taught that God used both tragedy and blessings to bring forth His will to prepare God's people for their eternal destiny in heaven. For the Christian who died to self and kept in step with the indwelling spirit, he accepted God's providence for his life, which has had a profound effect upon his emotional and psychological disposition, giving him a completely different frame of reference. On the other hand, those who follow the belief man is left alone in the universe to solve his own problems will rest under the heavy weight of tragic circumstances, unable to stand against the many storms of life. In time, they will be forced to work out their own remedies without trusting in God. Remember Jesus' rock-shattering statement? However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? See Luke 18, 1-8. The rhetorical answer is no. The whole world will follow after their own methodologies, establishing their own laws, principles, and cures, apart from God's miraculous involvement. The providence of God is no longer understood or taught in the modern church, driving most to put their trust in the world's governments. Dear Saint, when God turns your life upside down through manifold circumstances, then we must put our trust in Him to work everything together for good to those who have been called according to His purpose. See Romans 8.28 it makes little difference to the Christian if God causes it or allows it. What's important is that He will never leave us or forsake us, but will go through it with us. We can say with the Apostle Paul, Finally, let no one cause me trouble, for I bear on my body the marks of Jesus. Galatians 6.17 Clearly he rejoiced in his sufferings, knowing that he was being made fit for the kingdom of heaven. If we trust Christ by following His teachings alone and learning how to engage the enemy in spiritual warfare, then we will enjoy the blessed benefits of growing stronger in Him, thus receiving grace overflowing in the midst of our greatest trials. Furthermore, if we put our trust in God and His ways, then we cannot miss the hand of God working in our life. What a joy to see God at work in our life. What a joy to trust in His providential care. What a joy and a delight to trust in His law, written so beautifully upon our heart. Yes, God is involved in the affairs of men. God bless you, my friends, and remember to stand firm. We will be back in less than a minute after Paula Dispro introduces our show with heavenly music in a short music video. Remember to stay tuned for later in the show when Paula sings a different song each week to the glory of God. Stand firm, stand firm. We are safe within God's loving hands. Keep on trusting all His sovereign plans. Stand firm in peace. The Clinton campaign says that we are taking part in the recount. Really? How decisive is that? They are telling all the demonstrators and all those crying college kids that yes, maybe there's a chance that they can continue to follow the progressive agenda and receive all their free perks. So where is the healing? She said that she accepted the results of the election, 
But now it clearly looks like she's going back on her word and the division will continue. Now I suppose we need to be concerned about the authenticity of the recount. After the votes have been sitting for weeks, guarded or unguarded, we don't know to be recounted. This is a travesty. Where is the outcry of the Christian community? Are we going to just sit by idly and allow this to happen? Come on, people. It's time to stand up for what we believe in. We just talked about the providence of God and His desire to be involved in the affairs of men. Well, He's leading me to speak these words now. Perhaps He's leading you to listen and put a stop to this travesty, bring healing to a divided nation, to allow her to return to God. In other news, we have seen Israel on fire, presumably set by Muslim terrorists, which cause every Christian to cry out to God for their deliverance. We pray not only for their deliverance from the fire scorching the countryside and their cities, but we cry out for their deliverance from the blindness imposed upon them by Satan, not allowing them to see Jesus Christ as their true and only Messiah. For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise of your own conceits, that blindness in part is happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. And so all Israel shall be saved, as it is written, There shall come out of Sion the Deliverer, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. For this is my covenant unto them, when I shall take away their sins. Romans 11, 25 and 27. I'll be back after a 30-second station break. Are you prepared to stand firm against wars, plagues, pestilence, and every manner of catastrophe? Are you prepared to stand firm against the devastating natural disasters taking its toll on humanity? Are you prepared to stand firm against all the mental and psychological problems plaguing our planet? Are you prepared to stand firm against horrifying persecution and imprisonment for your faith? I'm so convinced we're living in the last days that I'm offering Stand Firm, a beautiful hardcover edition with an incredible discount available on my secure website through PayPal. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him and He will make your paths straight. With so much happening in the world today, we need to entrust ourselves totally into God's care. We need to give Him everything in our life. We need to rely on Him entirely. Each and every one of us needs to give all our life to Jesus. Amen.
We all know that Jesus Christ came to save the sinner and give them a new life in Him. But what many of us have forgotten is the true nature of sin. Yes, we have all sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But what is sin? We will all agree to disobey any of His commandments is sin. But how many can you quote? You might say, if I love God and my fellow man, that I have fulfilled His commandments. But don't forget that he has given us over 127 commands in the New Testament alone to show us how to love God and how to love one another. On our own, we cannot obey. But with God, all things are possible. Not only has he promised to save us, but give us the ability to obey all of his commandments and trust him alone. This is all by the grace of God, not by works lest any man should boast. This grace comes through faith, believing in Jesus Christ, who is the true Son of the living God, who died, was buried, and raised on the third day, opens a door to a new life in Him. This is a life where all of our sins are forgiven, and we are made into a brand new creation, where old things pass away. From the very first day, we are given the gift of the Holy Spirit to lead and guide us into all truth producing every manner of spiritual fruit. This eternal life misses the sting of death and ushers us into His glorious presence. This free gift is given to those who are called into His kingdom. Dear friend, if you have not yet accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord by placing all of your trust in Him to make you into a new creation and forgive you of all your sins, then you can do that right now in the privacy of your own home. Come to Jesus right now, confessing and repenting of your sins, telling Him that you believe that He is the Son of the living God and the only path to salvation, asking Him to take full control of your life as Lord. (music) Teresa Wiggins has a loving heart for the orphans, the widows, and the poor, and invites you to visit her website and make a tax-deductible donation today for one of these precious children. These are only two of the many hungry and deprived children that could use your help. The little girl and boy are from Uganda, Africa. Make your tax-deductible donation today using the PayPal button. Thank you for your help. Thank you for listening to Tribulation Radio. I pray that God has richly blessed your listening experience. Please help us spread the truth by telling your friends and family about Tribulation Radio. May our God bless and protect you until we meet again. Mm